Guys, today I'm super excited because we're in an ancient woodland that's more than 350 years old and it's only 10 minutes from my house and I never even knew it was here. So we're going to learn all about it, all about its history and what's going on with it by talking to the Native Woodland Trust. So let's go find them now. So here we are at Arden Wood, and I'm going to talk to Jeremy from the Native Woodland Trust all about this wood. Jeremy, thanks for having us down here. Dan, hello everyone at home. Welcome to our Arden Wood site. Uh, we're here in County Westmeath in Ireland today. This is one of 12 sites that we own across the country. So we're super excited to show you inside and see what we can find today on this very hot day. Yes. Um, and it's actually quite funny, you're joining us on the 10 year birthday of Arden Wood. We were actually oh, donated okay. the site 10 years ago. These trees today. are only 10 years old. They're not 10 years old. They're actually more ancient than that now. <laughs> Um, they were planted many years ago. Okay, but you've goodness. owned it for 10 years. Exactly, exactly. Uh -huh. This is, a, this is a, what we call a long standing or even an ancient woodland. So it's been around a lot more than 10 years. Okay. Um, we've only owned it for 10 years. No though. problem at all. Well, can we go inside and have a look? Of course we can. Let's go and have a look. Now mind you step down. Uh, the paths are just as ancient as the woodland in here. Okay. Wow, there's so many different trees in here and it's like we really get a good idea of a feeling of being in an old, old forest. So what kind of trees are we looking at in here? So there are heaps of different types of trees, Dan, and it all depends on, on where you're looking. Um, so we have what we would call our, our, our understory, which is our shrubs and smaller uh -huh. trees, which consist of like your hollies over here, yes, yeah, some yeah. of your hazels, uh, some of the smaller hazels anyways, uh -huh. and gelderose. And if you're looking towards the canopy now, we're obviously talking about some of our big trees. And yes. um, this massive fella here is called a beech tree. Oh, oh, um, yes. But it's not the most common. The most common would be your oak tree, which you'll see growing around here. And there's some spe uh, specimens that we'll stop at uh, further along the, the okay. course as we and go. If we want the guys at home to know the difference between, for example, a beech tree and an oak tree, what's the easiest way to tell the difference? So my, my solution, my, the best solution for the, the guys at home as well, is always to use your senses. So when I'm in the forest, I like to get up close to the tree. I like yeah. to touch its bark, see what the bark looks like. I like to look at the leaves and touch them if I can. Yes, Just bear yeah. in mind, some plants can be poisonous. Yes. Not yeah. many of the trees, mind you, yeah. but it's always important to gauge your senses. So I've actually picked a branch here for you guys to have a look at. Okay. Now the beech tree we're looking at today, um, you're looking at leaves that sort of look like that. They're quite glossy and you can see they've got very distinct lines going down them like that, okay? Uh -huh. The color doesn't change much from front to back. Now you can see that these leaves are what we call alternate. So they're grown on separate sides of the stem one at a time as we go up and along it. Okay. Now if you're looking at an oak tree, I've got a specimen over here you can see the leaves are very different yes very different. you can see they're what we call quite lobed they've got these lobes here now they don't come to points they're quite rounded at the ends um, but this branch here is from what we call a pendunculate oak okay. we have two oak tree types in Ireland uh, that are native to the country we have our pendunculate oak and we've got our sessile oak okay. and the easiest way to tell the difference is to look at the leaves and to look at the acorns themselves the acorns yes now uh, depending on the time of year yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, of course. so in winter you're not going to find many leaves or acorns in the yes. tree. Um, but the easiest way to find out the difference between a pendunculate and a sessile on the leaf is to look at the leaf stalk. So you can see that the leaf stalks uh -huh. are very small on this pendunculate oak. Yes. Whereas on a sessile, they would have longer stalks. Uh -huh. um, and when we look at the acorns now, it's the opposite that's true. Okay. So the, the, the acorns would grow on longer stalks in the pendunculate uh -huh. oak. And on the sessile oak, they'd be much shorter. They'd be growing pretty much off the twig itself. Uh-huh, excellent. Very interesting to pick them up. And am I right in saying that I've heard some people say that beech isn't a native tree, but other people say it kind of is? And what's the story yes. with beech? Yes, yeah, so as we said, we've two native oaks in Ireland. Yes. And what that means is these trees, if we look back in the pollen records, so what some very clever scientists can do is they can take what's called a pollen core from the earth. Uh -huh. So they can dig out a core of many, many multiple layers of soil. And what this gives them is an idea over time of what what type of pollen was being deposited in the area over the, pe the period of tens of years, of hundreds of years, even thousands. Okay. And if we look back at the last major change in Ireland was an ice age. Yes. And um, when we're looking at pollen core samples now, we're looking at was the pollen there um, 
as soon as the Ice Age stopped? Was yes. it there 500, 1,000 years uh -huh. after? Uh, did the pollen only start occurring in the last few hundred years? Yes. So in the case of our beech and our oak, yeah. we can see that the pollen from the oak, it's been releasing pollen um, since the last Ice Age. So uh -huh. got here very early on the land bridges. Yes, yes, yes. Now the beech tree, on yeah. the other hand, the pollen records will only indicate that this arrived much later. Uh -huh. And it's presumed that man actually brought this across yes. instead of nature. But it was hundreds of years ago. Hundreds of years ago yes, anyways. Yeah. So the real crux of the matter is we have nothing against a beautiful beech yes, tree. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. This tree is actually not native, but it's what we would call naturalized. Uh -huh. So the tree has been growing here for so long that um, it's actually formed beneficial relationships with the animals, um, the plants, the fungi, uh, the bacteria in its environment. Excellent. So the oak tree has been here for ages. Yes, it's yeah, formed yeah. friendships with these creatures um, over that time. The beech is only a newcomer, so it might not be friends with everything just yet, but it yes. started to make friends. And um, this is why we call trees native. This is why they're important, because they've developed these relationships. They can um, harbor, they make a, a lot of homes for creatures yes, to yeah, live in, yeah. for bacteria to feed on. Uh, whereas a naturalized tree like this beech yes. mightn't have as many relationships, so it mightn't have as many benefits for the environment. Oh, okay, okay. Um, when yes. we look at species that are alien, invasive species, uh -huh, yeah, yeah, these yeah. are species that have only recently come to Ireland, say they've come on a container ship or on okay, the bottom of somebody's yes, shoe. Yes, yes, they don't yes. have any relationships with the, uh, the plants and animals and fungi. Okay, they so can be harmful. That can be harmful. Uh -huh. um, so that's a bit of a rundown okay. for you there. So this beach, it mightn't be native, but it's certainly a great part of this wood. And it's one of only about three massive beaches we have. Okay. We're not getting rid of them anytime soon. In fact, we'll keep them. Um, they're lovely trees and uh, there's no, there's no yeah. harm in keeping them here next to our gorgeous oaks. Perfect. Well, can we have a little walk down here? And of I think course. you told me there might be some animals living in here as well. Let's go have a look. We're coming Perfect. close to a badger set. Now, mind your foot here, Dan. You can see we're coming to a bit of a hole in the ground. Yes, yes, yes. Were you digging here or something? Uh, I was not digging. My friend uh, the badger was uh, digging. Uh, um, now, these are only two entrances here that you're seeing yes. uh, to what is a much larger, what we call a badger set. Yes. So it's where a little colony of badgers would live. Uh -huh. And uh, a lot of the time is these holes would be interconnected so that the badgers can find their way from one side to the wood to the other. Okay. In a matter of seconds, um, it might be, uh, you know, that uh, this is just two, sorry, of about nine entrances that we have okay. across the reserve excellent, here. Excellent, excellent. Um, and I noticed this little one here, this prickly little guy, that's a holly, right? Yes, that's a holly tree. Um, so a lot of the time you'll see these spiky leaves, they're very yes. easy uh, to identify. It's probably one of the most easy trees to identify yes. um, in Europe. You can see it on my hand there now. Um, now very prickly, um, and that's, yeah, one of the, yeah. these, that's one of the reasons why it's so easy to tell what a holly tree is. Um, the, the, the tree itself is quite versatile. So so you'd, you'd either see it as a standalone tree, such yes. as you have here today, uh -huh. uh, which is my favorite. Yes. You'll also have it in hedgerows. So okay, this tree yeah, um, there, yeah. would respond very well to being cut. So if you were to oh. cut it over the top there, um, yes. it would actually uh, grow from outwards and become thicker and form what's uh -huh. called a hedge. You'd be familiar yes, with a hedge yeah, in Ireland. Um, now, quite interestingly, um, on these trees, they're very responsive. And what I mean by that is whatever happens around them, they can make changes to themselves to adapt to that. Okay. So one great example is the holly tree is very good to respond in to grazing. So if animals were to come up to this tree and start nibbling off the yes. leaves, yeah, yeah, you can oh. see here they're very spiky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the tree itself would either become more spiky yeah. if there was more grazing, more of its leaves were being lost yeah, and it was yeah, saying, yeah. I don't want to lose those leaves, I'm going to spike up a little bit. Um, or alternatively, um, if the tree wasn't being grazed, the leaves can become less spiky. Um, oh, and it's the same is true if you look at the profile of the tree itself. So yes. towards the base of the tree, you can see that the leaves are a lot spikier. And towards the top of the tree, a lot smoother. Less spiky, yes. And come here. I can hear some tractors going by here outside. Ah. It's a, there's a field, big field here, and I heard you guys have some plans for that, do you? We've got major plans for expansion can we go here, have Dan. A look? We absolutely can. Yes. You go on. So we just wanted to stop here for a minute on our way to that field we were talking about. Jeremy wanted to talk to me about dead wood. Apparently, dead wood isn't a bad thing in a forest. That's exactly right. So what you're seeing here, Dan, is what we call uh, natural thinning of a okay. forest. Um, so a lot of the time man can come in and cut down a tree and yes. use it for timber. That's absolutely not what, these, what this wood and all our sites are for. Uh, our sites are for nature which means any trees that grow on it or we plant 
will be there for good. Okay. Um, now this tree that you're talking about, this gorgeous tree that we, we were only yeah. just sitting on for lunch, yeah. um, fell by itself. So it could have been a storm, it could have been just that the tree is getting older yes. and its limbs are starting to fall. Um, now the beauty of it is it's not all doom and gloom that this tree's life has come to an end. I see it's actually an oak tree. Yes. Um, it's true that a tree grows for a couple of hundred years, say 500 years, yes. it lives for another 500 years, and they also say that it will die for 500 years. Okay, so right. now that this tree has fallen, yes. um, it might be dead to you and me, but yes. you can see already there's life sprouting from it. Yes, um, yeah, yeah. And this tree here will rot, it'll slowly decay into the soil, and it will feed the soil. And hey, it might even feed some of the little acorns that itself okay. drop down. Its seedlings need nutrients to survive, and the old tree could give them life over the next few hundred years as those grow to just the same size. Amazing, so forests don't have to be about getting timber out of them, they can also be for the nature and for the biodiversity and for everyone to enjoy. That's really exciting. Let's go look at that field and see what your plan is for Let's it. Let's go. Okay, so now we're here right on the very edge of the forest and there's a big field here that wraps the whole way around it. And Jeremy tells me that the Woodland Trust have something very special in mind for these fields. Exactly, Dan. So we've got two primary aims as a trust. The first is to protect the ancient woodlands of Ireland and the second is to see them expanding. Okay. So this woodland here, we've already achieved our first goal. We've protected it, we've bought right. it and it's right. not going to be harmed, by, uh, even neglected. Um, right. And we're into the second stage here and I'm actually super chuffed to let you know that we're well on our way to achieving the expansion project. Right. So this woodland as it stands is about seven acres and it's a horseshoe shape or a crescent shape. So that's our forest like that. Yes. And the field in the middle as well as the adjacent field all the way around uh -huh. is actually privately owned. It's grazing pasture. Yes. But we're in the advanced stages now of actually acquiring the center field oh, and this adjacent field that you're so seeing. So you are going to own these fields? We'll own them all. And animals will stop eating all the tiny little trees? Well we'll see about that now Dan. But what it's going to mean for us the exciting thing is the woodland's going to um, treble in size at least okay, um, and the beautiful thing is we don't have to do much although we do plan to give nature a helping hand uh -huh. you can already see and we'll point that out to you now just on my right that oh, the forest yeah. itself is already naturally regenerating the seedlings coming up here some oak can and indeed. some other bits some and pieces oak, some hawthorn even some hazel are already spreading Right. So our long-term plan now is uh, we have a scalable project called a nurseries project. Uh -huh. And what it means is we'll establish a nursery in walking distance from this wood. Yes. And it means together with our volunteers, members of the public and our members, we uh -huh. can come here, we can collect seed from the wood itself, we can grow them in our polytunnel in the nursery, yes. and eventually together we can plant them into this field. Now, Mother Nature does the best job of planting, yes. so yeah, we'll yeah. only do about 20% planting ourselves. The rest we'll leave up to Mother Nature. She's far greener thumbs Wonderful. than we could ever have ourselves. Excellent. Well, Jeremy, that is amazing. I've learned so much today. I walked through a beautiful ancient forest that's hundreds of years old and was just about 10 minutes from my own house. I've seen that you're going to take over it now and you're going to mine it and take really good care of it. You've bought fields around it to allow it to expand and I think what the Native Woodland Trust is doing is really cool. So if any of the guys watching at home want to get involved, look up the Native Woodland Trust. I really enjoyed learning all about the forest today and we're looking forward to seeing you on the next one. See ya! Thank you.